you know, that my four grandparents were entrepreneurs. And I also think that I had a very early transcontinental experience. When I was six years old, uh, my parents got divorced, I think five or six, and um, my mother met this um, sergeant in the army. And um, uh, he was an African-American from Mississippi. And we were living in, in, in Germany in the same town that Elvis Presley lived when he did his army service. We moved to Columbia, South Carolina. And um, that sort of started a little bit of an, of an odyssey in a way for me because we, we lived in South Carolina. Then um, we lived in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And when I was 11 years old, I went back to Germany. And, um, and my father, at the same time, married an American in his second marriage, um, a woman from Seymour, Texas. So when I was 15, I moved to, to Dallas for a year to spend that with my dad. So, so I, and then when I was 19, I moved to Switzerland to go to college. So this is all. This is all the things uh, that you know have make me me. That I, I sound like an American, but I'm actually German, one hundred percent. I spent you know thirteen years of my life in Switzerland. I think that that is what makes me me. This transcontinental entrepreneurial experience. I think it helps me understand that there are different points of view. Always there's. I don't take things at face value because I understand that that people are made up of the fabric of their experiences and uh, of their backgrounds and made that that could be language, that could be religion, that could be their uh, you know race. South in the eighties, that was that was. That was weird for us, right? We would get stares all the time, and, and I didn't understand that as a child. But I've, you know, I've learned to understand why people do the things that they do, and that um, that things are not absolute. Things that mean something to someone from Germany do not mean anything for for an American, and vice versa. I have a strong visual cues. I love things that are beautiful. That are nice to look at. I don't have a design background, but I, I'm, I love art. I love contemporary art specifically, and um, that's always been a part of me. Um, you know, it's maybe a part being why pixability, you know, popped into my head as an idea. I'm a repeat technology entrepreneur. I started my first company right out of graduate school, and I didn't you know think I could do this you know I was just a just a girl I mean I was 26 but I felt I was just a girl right out of school and I didn't think I could do that but I started a technology startup um, that was a spin-off of the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in, in Zurich and um, we made speech technology software and uh, that uh, was was really a rewarding experience. I you know I, I really tapped into my inner nerd and my lost calling to be a software engineer. And I I I had a lot of fun doing that. We raised eight million dollars for the company to uh, start it from angels and from venture capitalists. And we worked really hard. It was, extremely hard to get this company off the ground, but we grew it to um, 130 people. Uh, it grew and then it got sold to Nuance Communications and our technology is contained in, in Google Android. You know, about, oh my goodness, billions of phones these days contain the technology of my first company. Um, um, all these navigation systems uh, that are out there, um, the portable navigation systems, the premium cars in the world like Mercedes or BMW. So I did that and uh, then I got to go to MIT and this was sort of almost a deja vu because my MIT and the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology are very similar and I wanted to come up with my next idea and I 
uh, had been helping my husband be, you know, a, he was doing on the side, he was doing some technology films, some documentary films, and, um, and I saw the power of video. I actually saw it when, uh, even in our, our wedding video, how video technology was advancing and how there had been a, a drop by orders of magnitude in the input factors in video. And so while I was at MIT, I came up with, with an idea that video would be a great way to found a new company. And um, that's how I founded Pixability. I thought it would be a big application for video technology. And it turns out that it's in business videos. And um, that's what we do. We create video marketing software and we help um, medium-sized to large corporations be successful on YouTube. While I was at MIT, I saw Clayton Christensen speak, and he honestly talks about disruptive innovation and the innovator's dilemma. And I understood much more clearly that what I was doing as a technology entrepreneur was taking advantage of disruptions. And when I put that together with my positive experience around taking videos of my family and helping out with doc films, I knew that there was a huge business opportunity there. So this is the thing that disruptors really have to think about. They have to think about where is something taking place that um, there are, for example, um, new technologies coming into the world and that is causing input factors to go down by orders of magnitude that are may or maybe for example size of things are going down every single day i try to help um, com uh, corporations that are being majorly disrupted i try to help them understand that it's it's very hard it's it's hard um, you you have to embrace that things are changing and you have to learn to kill your babies uh, it's it, and and that's very hard because you're you're emotionally attached to this thing that you've built, whether that is you know a printing company or a television station or um, something that is that is being disintermediated. You know, it's it, it's it's very hard because people have built their livelihoods on it. They define themselves oftentimes through what they've been able to build. And I think that that is sort of my function as an entrepreneur is to, to help birth creative destruction. You know, in the Schumpeterian sense of creative entrepreneurs help with creative destruction. I think it's a positive thing. I think that, that there are many people there that, um, that can embrace that if, it, if, if they have a strong core of self-esteem. I think that that's very important. Uh, a strong self uh, of self-esteem, not just personally, but also as a company. If you have that, you can embrace change because you know that technology and disruption are not are just a fact of, of life. They're not you. You are you because you have your values. Because you have you have people and. That's what makes us us, and and technologists are not there to, to destroy, but to make things better. There are examples um, of people that do this very well. For example, Netflix. A, a key uh, example for a company that has embraced disruption and embraced it in a positive way by saying, we are going to actively kill our baby of that is functioning so well of these DVDs being sent out because we understand DVDs are going away and and we know that some people will not like us because of that. You have to have that, that self-confident core in yourself that says I know that this is not going to work for everybody there, and some people will not like this, but for in the long run, this is the important decision to make. My next, my next book that I'm planning is uh, going to be called YouTube Nation. TV is dead, and we 
all need to understand that in, in a business sense that that is that that is going to change the way we've interacted um, you know online online is, is here to stay that sounds trivial but that has that has all kinds of reverberations around how for the last 50 years families have come together in front of you know to watch television to, to come together um, that that is really going away and what what takes that place right what takes the place in in our in our families of of this um, in our living rooms in in you know how we arrange our furniture how all of those things uh, really make a, a, a difference and and technology is doing that so um, so if you um, are, are thinking as a business person about about the future think about that think about the family and how how families interact and um, if you understand that then I think you can uh, you can anticipate a lot of disruptions that are coming.